All right, now that we determined that I'm going to wire this battery according to this diagram into a cluster of wires that's going to go into cell 14 positive, I started adding the terminals to the BMS leads itself. Now, I wasn't going to cover any of this because it's pretty widely covered out there, but I, I got stopped and thought there's a few things that I, I wanted to bring up to just questions I might get or some issues that I want to address that I've seen others doing. Now I'm following um, something I've seen another user do where they're adding numbers to the end of the terminals as they're crimping them and then I am also adding labels to it. Now one of the things I am not doing here is I am not clipping these wires to length. For one, number one, I'm in one location and I'll be flying to another location to install this. So I don't know the exact length I need right now. Number two is I'm not sure that this BMS is going to be the final BMS for this battery. And if I cut these wires shorter, I'm limiting my options. Now there's arguments out there about you can't cut these, they need to be the same length. And I'm not going to get into that whole argument. The other thing I wanted to talk about was adding terminals to these wires and things that I've seen wrong and just wiring in general. I'm not, you know, a professional electrician or anything like that, but I do a lot of electrical work. Uh, and this doesn't pertain to just batteries in general, so let's just take a look at this. Now, this wire here is coming from the factory with a pretty short amount of wire that's clipped from the insulation. Now the problem happens when you I, people will take this and they'll take the wire and stick it into the terminal and I don't know if you can see that but you can see the wire actually protruding out the end of the metal clamp where you're going to crimp in there, the metal crimp. But what happens is they want to see that protrude through, but when they crimp it, they'll crimp on top of the insulation, and then they'll have a bad connection. And they'll only figure out that they have a bad connection when they wire up the battery and they go to test their cell voltages as they're stepping up in cells, and something doesn't read correct. So what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll take this if they're too short I'll come in and I'll take it and I'll snip about another 1 16th to 1 8th or so of the insulation back I'll cut it back that way when I put the wire in I'll know for sure that I'm getting good contact when I crimp this on the wire and not just on the insulation Another problem is, as I see people doing, is when they set this crimp, they'll back this wire out a little bit accidentally and not get a good crimp. So make sure that's bottomed out in there, you have a good crimp on there, and make sure you set that crimp really well. Now you don't want to get to the point where you cut that wire off, you know, crimp too hard. Um, so some crimpers are, are different than others, uh, so just be aware of that when you're setting your crimps. Now if I look down into this, if I take a look, yeah, it looks like a good solid crimp down in there. If we can see that, I'll do a tug test. And even some people, when they crimp on top of the insulation, they'll do the tug test, and the tug test is fine, but they're crimped on top of the insulation. So another way to avoid missing that error in case if you're crimped on the insulation is, and I've seen people when they're testing their batteries, they've got an issue and they don't know why. Now, if I have an issue with this is on the battery, is it the crimp terminal? Is it the, the lug not being torqued properly? Is it the lug on the battery itself or just the battery? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for continuity uh, with my voltmeter here on that connection. And there you can see I have continuity. So that tells me that I am crimped properly there uh, on the wire. From there, these are these are heat shrink with uh, a glue inside on them. So not everybody uses these. I'm in a salt water, humid environment. So I've got these that I'm using here. 
heat shrink these down a little bit. They're kind of kind of a good size. So I'm just kind of rolling it on there, making sure it's got a good connection. Be careful, it's hot. You do that. Okay, there, I have a good connection there with this. And now that I have this done, like I said, I've seen this before, and I am working on cell 9 positive. So once this is done, I'm going to, on the top of this, connection here I'm going to put the number I'm going to put the number 9 and that way I'll know there'll be multiple layers of redundancy when I wire this thing up of course when I set it on the battery I'll trace my wires I'll confirm the numbers I've put on it and you know have multiple layers of redundancy there so those are some things to think about when uh, you're wiring up your PMS Okay, I've come to the point where I'm at uh, number 14 here and on this side for cell 14 I've got to remember that I've been working upside down with these wires so the wires will actually connect this direction here so this is my last this red wire is my last wire and my first wire is going to be the black wire on the smaller set here. so I just got to remember that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these leads and I'm going to need to go the last one on this larger lead and then one two three four five over here so starting from black one two three four five these are all cell 14, this will be cell 15, and then this will be cell 16. I'm going to set this up and start stripping these wires. Alright, now that I've got all of these cut back, I'm going to try and make them even here. I think I'm going to go with a connector that is a twelve to ten size connector. Let me try and even these out a little bit. I want to get them about the same height. Get them into this terminal. sure they're all even they look even not one of them is pulled back further than the other they all look pretty good there hold that in place I'll give it a crimp here last thing I want to do is have any of these slip out on me Make sure we get a good bite on there center and <clears throat> get that thing on there. I'm going to adjust this crimp a little bit here. Get another bite on it. Move it further down a little bit. Okay. So I've kind of crimped up and down over here. I'm going to pull on each wire each wire I'm going to pull individually. Okay, they all feel pretty solid. Feel like it's a pretty good connection. And we'll go ahead and shrink this. All right, so take a look at what we've got here. We've got the last wire of the larger connector connectors, and then the first 
five. And the two leftovers right here are, are going to be cell 15 and 16, and I just got to terminate those. And then our connection here is going to be cell 14. So this is going to be cell 14 positive. And I will add my 14 positive sticker on there, label on there, and get these last two done. All right, what I have here is the bundle for cell 14, and I have 15 and 16, and I want to check continuity, make sure I have continuity here. Now, uh, bundle this bundle for 14 should have continuity from this lead here to the terminal, which it does, and then I should be able to stay on the terminal and go to my next set of bundle over here and first wire correct second wire correct third wire correct fourth wire correct and fifth wire is correct so I have uh, the correct uh, continuity between this bundle of six wires now I'll move over to the white wire which is number 15 and then I'll move over to the red wire which is number 16 and I'm good to go on these bundles. So I'll go ahead, uh, heat shrink these up, and uh, wrap this up. Okay, here's the final assembly of the JBD BMS. In summary, I decided to go ahead and go with the bus bar jumper configuration for the B minus and C minus. I decided to stick with the latest literature on JBD's website and configure this with the first. 14 wires going for cells number 1 through 13 keeping in mind that cell number 1 has a positive and negative lead the last wire in the first set of 15 is connected with the first five in the next group for cell number 14 and then we have cells 15 and 16 also I will be connecting up the temperature sensor I'm more concerned about high temperature I don't have a problem with low temperature and I will also be hooking up the Bluetooth and the screen that goes along with this BMS. Now, when we get up to the location and we do further work on the battery, uh, I'll go ahead and talk about how I plan on top balancing it. I'm going to put it in a 48 volt configuration, hook up the BMS, ensure that the BMS is working properly, the application is working properly, the screen's working properly, and then charge the battery up to its 3.65, let the BMS cut the battery off, disconnect the battery, put it into a parallel single battery bank and do a final lower amperage top balance charge on it. And we'll take a look at that when we get there. We'll be flying into the location to work on finishing up the racking system, which is a carport slash racking system and installing the final 12 solar panels for a total of 24 panels on the racking system itself. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Any suggestions, any comments uh, on the configuration or some of the choices I've made, please let me know in the comments below. And I appreciate uh, everyone watching.